Good morning and welcome to worship this July 5th, 2020. I'm intern Pastor Patty Bjorkland of the Kenyan Area Internship Churches of the ELCA. And I'm here to lead worship today to the theme of the wonders of creation. Today's worship is going to be a bit different format in that I've called together the pastors of said internship and invited them to share a sort of round table sermon in that those who could participate might contribute a two minute reflection on the topics of the wonder of creation and how might the care of creation look through the lens of faith. I'm grateful to those that could contribute and I think that you will be blessed by the word they bring to worship today. I also am grateful for the many musicians who have shared their time and talent for this worship also. So with that, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, we begin with the Litany of Creation. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. The heavens declare the glory of God. Not in words, but in a glorious technicolor light show, every day shouts in wordless language of that God, almighty God, made it all. Morning has broken like the first morning. Blackbird has spoken like the first bird. Praise for the singing, praise for the morning, praise for them springing fresh from above. Blackbird has spoken, and the voice of the turtle dove is heard in the land. Here, and look at the birds of the heaven, Jesus says in his sermon. Take a lesson from them. Consider the stork, God says to Job. When she spreads her feathers to run, she laughs at horse and rider. One of our old confessions tells us that the universe lies before our eyes like a beautiful book in which all creatures, great and small, are as letters to make us ponder the invisible things of God. Jesus says, consider the lilies, to make us ponder the invisible things of God, his providential care and his love of beautiful things. When Jesus walked the earth, he walked the earth. His feet were dirty with the dust of the earth. His sermon illustrations were about flowers and trees and seeds and vineyards and birds and fish and sheep and goats and pigs. The psalmist lies down in green pastures beside still waters and finds peace. He imagines God dressed up in sunshine with all heaven stretched out for his tent. He imagines God laughing at his pet dragon, the Leviathan, as he frolics in the sea. He exclaims, what a wildly wonderful world, God. The glory of the, of the Lord, let it last forever. We are gathered here this morning on this green pasture with the tent of the sky stretched before us to worship the creator of the universe. The Lord is in his holy temple. And that temple is the whole blooming creation. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Let's say it together. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him.
This morning, as I am out at Holden Park on a beautiful summer Sunday morning for worship, I hear the music of creation all around me. I hear the birds singing, I hear some squirrels chattering, I hear the breeze through the trees. And it reminds me of something that Hildegard of Bingen once said. She said that all of creation is a symphony of praise to God. All of creation is a symphony of praise to God. Hildegard lived hundreds of years ago, and she was a nun who both wrote music and studied medicine and was a leader in the church of her time. Hildegard wrote many books and had visions of God speaking to her. For her, it was important to remember that creation is infinitely tied together. The music of nature and the music we humans make all praise God. And because we're all part of a symphony of praise to God, all parts of creation are intertwined and important. From the quieter parts of creation that we sometimes miss, to the more vibrant, beautiful, more noticeable pieces of creation. Every piece of creation is important. Every piece of creation is part of our symphony of praise. And that means as Christians, we give thanks to God for all of this symphony of creation, and we also care for it. We care for the quieter pieces of creation. We care for the brighter, more noticeable pieces of creation, because all parts of creation are part of God's symphony. All parts of creation, all people, are part of God's creation that we care for and we nurture and we're good stewards of. Amen. Our reading for today is from the second chapter of Genesis. The Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east, and there he put the man whom he had formed. Out of the ground the Lord God made to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil also. The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to till it and to keep it. Here ends the reading. Thanks be to God. Hello, this is Pastor Renita from Hegri Lutheran. This is the day that the Lord has made, and it's a blessing to gather with you through the joy of technology. One of my favorite Bible stories is Genesis, where we hear our creation story, and we hear about how God digs in the dirt to create new life and breathe life into it. God is the first gardener and as you can see I have my gardening outfit on and I love gardening and gardening in fact brings me great joy and hope one tiny little seed often smaller than this can generate bushels and loads of food for my family and for my neighbors too it's always amazing to me that God gives us something so small and does so much with it one of my biggest hopes around this time, especially during COVID and all the stuff that has been happening, is this rush on seeds and on gardening. In fact, seed companies could not keep up with the demand because so many people were driven back to the earth, to this divine calling of creating through something as simple and blessed as a seed. And that brings me so much hope when we can dig into the ground together and realize the beauty and power there is in something so simple and what God does through something so small. So God bless you. I hope you get to enjoy your day, maybe get your hands a little dirty and think about our creation story once again and how God breathes life and hope hope and newness into the small things around us. Have a good day. For the beauty of the earth, for the beauty of the skies, for the love which from our birth over and around us lies. Lord of all to you we raise this our grateful hymn of praise for the beauty of each hour of the 
the day and of the night, hill and vale and tree and flower, sun and moon and stars of light. Lord of all to you we raise this our grateful hymn of praise. Sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah. Hello, my name is Paul Graham. I'm the pastor at Denison and Vang Lutheran Churches. So the question Patty asked was, what does creation care look like through the lens of faith? And I think part of that answer is right there in the question itself. To, through the eyes of faith, see the world around us as God's creation. Somebody once said that creation is the first Bible. Creation is the very first act of divine revelation. God has chosen to communicate God's self in the diverse shapes of beauty, love, truth, and goodness that we see daily in our world. And creation is the divine creativity and the grace of God. Just to hold a leaf is to hold something of the sacred in your hands. As Genesis tells us, when God looked at what God had made, God said, it is good. It is very good. So it does us good to get out in nature into creation. The mental health benefits of being in nature, just taking a walk in the woods, for instance, are becoming more and more well documented. And there are immense spiritual benefits as well. This summer, we invested in some kayaks. I've been enjoying getting out on the beautiful lakes and rivers in this area. It's good for my soul. It's just a one way that the Good Shepherd leads me to still waters and green pastures and revives my spirit. So maybe a good way to care for creation from a faith perspective is first just to notice it, to appreciate it, to be awed by it. We've lost that connection to nature, to creation, but every once in a while, just look up at the sky. How the sky looks in that moment may be a unique configuration of clouds and sun that has never been there before and never will be again. And it's there for you to notice and marvel at. When we appreciate nature, when we allow ourselves to be awed by it, we begin to see a deeper truth. And that truth is that we are a part of it. Nature isn't just something out there separate from us. We are woven into it. Creation is all linked together. It's harder to allow damage to something when you see that it is, in fact, part of you. And it gives us a unique perspective on what it means to care for creation. May God's peace be with you today. I'm Pastor Julie Ragnus, and I serve joyfully at First Lutheran in Kenyon, Minnesota. I'm glad to be with you today. I love to be out in God's creation, whether it is hiking in the mountains of Montana, or in a remote village in Tanzania, or in the cloud forest of Guatemala, and walking the streets here of Kenyon, or being in one of our lovely parks. It's important for us to be out in God's creation and notice how it is God is providing us all that we need to breathe, to eat, to be, to have our being and, and move in God's world and have abundant life. Last year at this time I was in Guatemala up in the cloud forest and the cloud forest is significant for our world. The cloud forest catches um, droplets from the clouds on the plants that then nourish the ground and then become the clean water that we drink even here in Minnesota. The young catchy women are being trained there not to take down the forest to plant corn, but rather to understand what is already growing there that can be edible. We eat so good there, we eat right off uh, the land and we breathe such clean air. And it reminds me again that God gives us all that we need. Caring for the earth means faithfully seeing what the earth is giving us and not forcing the earth to give us what we want. 
It is also about caring for each other. This is God's gift to each of us, abundant life. It's Gandhi that said, Earth, creation, provides enough to satisfy every person's need, but not every person's greed. Thanks. Have a great day. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I invite you to listen to this short meditation from the Green Bible Devotional by Carla Barnhill. She states, From the very beginning, humanity has been charged with the stewardship of the earth. The Hebrew word in Genesis chapter 2 verse 15 is abad, which means to serve. Serving and caring for creation is not an option for those who see to fall, seek to follow God. It is what we were created to do. This calling suggests that as we tend to the earth, and as we tend to one another as God's creation, we are following God's first command. Creation care becomes an act of worship, an act of obedience and service, not of the earth, but of the one who created the earth. God called us into partnership from the moment we were brought into being. We are God's hands and feet on the earth, the caretakers of all that God has made. Words of Carla Barnhill. So, as the feet representing God, I ask, how heavily have we trod upon the soil and reaped the resources of the earth? Back in Adam's day, when the human population was easily overwhelmed by the sheer magnitude of nature, I wonder if we would have even been able to discern a human footprint amidst the mass of creation that God called Adam to sort and to manage. But these days, you may agree that the tables have been turned. While humanity may have once been overwhelmed by the expanse and wildness of nature, Today, it's more like nature is overwhelmed by humanity's presence. As we take up more and more space, as our population numbers increase unfettered, and as our industry and technology advances on the basis of human convenience, rather than the consideration for the needs, nay, the survival of nature. The relationship between creation and humanity have been thrown off balance. So what is there to be done? What can I do to return the relationship back into balance? What can one person do? That word overwhelming comes back to mind when I ponder this question. But I think there is an answer. Something you and I can do individually to work towards mending our groaning creation. And that question is, what legacy do you want to leave behind for generations to come? What legacy do you want to leave behind for generations to come? It was only a couple of years ago that I realized that my dad had that in mind way back when myself and my siblings were very little. One day he came home with his truck loaded with several dozen of pine tree saplings. He called his four young children ages four to eight and directed us and our mom to follow him to the meadow just up the road from our house. He fired up his tractor, and as each furrow was plowed, we laid the tiny tree saplings just so, so that when he turned over the next furrow, the soil would land squarely on the base of the saplings, standing it up straight. And then we followed up by tamping them all down. Even as a four-year-old little girl, I was rather amazed at the ingenuity of the process. And after some 100 trees were planted, we headed back to the house, pleased with our work. 
Now, several decades later, there's an impressive grove of enormous pine trees all standing straight and tall as a legacy, a reminder of my dad, but also, and maybe more importantly, an example he provided for his children about taking care of nature, of leaving the world in better shape than you found it. I believe this is what God intended when he called Adam to abad, or serve and care for creation. So I ask, what tangible act might you do to let generations to come know that you cared about them and about creation? I hope that you will ponder and pray about this question, that it spurs you to action, not only for the sake of the survival and flourishing of future generations, but more importantly as an act of faith, as we have been called to do, to protect and to serve this amazing legacy that God also cherishes and has left in our care. Amen. Let us all now join together in our prayer of creation. Following Lord, in your mercy you are invited to respond. Hear our prayer. Let us pray. O God of the poor, help us to rescue the abandoned and the forgotten of this earth, so precious in your eyes. Bring healing to our lives that we may protect the world and not prey on it, that we may sow beauty, not pollution and destruction. Touch the hearts of those who look only for gain at the expense of the poor and of the earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of abundance and generosity, teach us to discover the worth of each living thing, to be filled with awe and contemplation, to recognize that we are profoundly united with every creature as we journey towards your infinite light. We thank you for being with us each day Encourage us, we pray, in our struggle for justice, love, and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we join in the prayer that our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now receive the blessing. May the blessing of God, creator of heaven and earth, rest upon you and upon all that God has made. May the risen Christ Jesus transform your life and your vision so that you may live in reconciliation with all things. And may the power of God's Holy Spirit move over all this earth 
like at the breath of spring, to renew the earth and all its people, so that all creation may join together in praise to God's holy name. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forevermore. Amen. And now let us join in our closing song, All You Works of God.